In this lesson video, we're going to start adding data to our database using the DB adapter file we just moved over. Now I can see here I didn't save my activity main, so let me go ahead and save that real quick. And then let's go ahead and move now into the main activity.java file. And before the onCreate method, we're going to go ahead and add here a few objects to work with. The first is going to be a time object, which is going to allow us to store in the date or timestamp of when each one of our tasks are going to be created. So it's going to be time. I'm going to call it today, and I'm going to set it equal to new time. And let's go ahead and make sure we get the current time zone for the device itself. So I'm going to go ahead and say time dot get current time zone, and then have an opening and closing parenthesis inside of there, and end that with a semicolon. And I need to hover over the time and import it into our activity. So I'll click import time. And if I hover over get current time zone, I must have spelled it wrong. Yes, I did. I put a capital Z. So change to get current time zone. There we go. And I go ahead and hit enter. So we've got our first object. I also am going to create an object based off of our DB adapter class. So let's go ahead and do DB adapter. And I'm going to call this one my db colon and then the last one that we need to work with here is going to be the edit text and we're going to call this one et tasks this is from our layout and we're going to use that to get the text that the user has entered to place in the database so i'll hover over edit text and choose to import that one as well now let's go ahead and go to the on create method and let's go ahead and set this edit text we just created. So I'll say et tasks equals edit text in parentheses, and then come outside of there and do find view by id r dot id dot. That was called edit text task, and I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom now, and I'll space down that last closing curly brace so that I can enter in some more methods. And I need to create a method now to work with the DB adapter to handle the opening of the database. So I'll just call this one private void. I'll just call this one open DB, left and right parentheses, and, and have an opening curly brace, and hit enter. And inside of here, let's go ahead and use that DB adapter object we created called mydb, and we'll set it equal to a new DB adapter, and we'll go ahead and use this for the context, and end that with a semicolon, and I'm going to go ahead now and set mydb.open, and I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. And I spelled that with a capital B. Let's make that a lowercase b. Okay, so this is going to this is going to go ahead and open the database. And if I go over to my DB adapter and I scroll down, there we go. DB adapter. Here it is. The open is what we're calling there to get a writable version of the database. I'll switch back over to my main activity.java. And let's go ahead and call this method to run whenever our activity is loaded. So I'm going to come back up here to the onCreate and just call this to run by typing in open db the parentheses and a semicolon. So as my activity is being created, it's actually going to call to open the database down here. Let's go ahead and add another method to handle the click event of the button add task that we had already created on our main activity. So this will actually add the task that the user has entered into the database. So we'll start off with public void, and I'll just call this one on click underscore add task. We'll say view fee. We'll go ahead and open the curly brace and hit enter. And I need to import that view, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's start off by setting the time. So I'm going to say today which was our time object, dot set to now, and that was a semicolon. That'll get the timestamp of when the task is going to be added. And now let's go ahead and create a string 
I'll just call this one timestamp. And we'll set it equal to day dot, let's format this so that our timestamp is readable for us. I'll go ahead and put an opening and closing parenthesis. And in the format, I'm going to go ahead and start off with double quotes. And let's go ahead and do the format of percent year dash percent M for month dash percent D for day. Put a space in there. Let's go ahead and do percent H for the hour. This time I'll do a colon percent and an M colon for the minutes and percent S for the seconds. And I'll come out here to the end and put a semicolon. So our timestamp is going to have the year, month, day, and then the hour, minute, and second. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Let's do a conditional statement to make sure that that text box has text in it. The edit text has text in it. So we'll do if, and I'm going to go ahead and use the exclamation to say for not because I'm going to test to see if it's empty. We'll say text utils dot is empty and inside of the parentheses here I'm going to go ahead and do et tasks dot get text. We'll go ahead and say dot to string because it is looking for a string and I'll end that with the opening curly brace and hit enter so that we have the closing for our if statement. So this is going to be our if statement here. And I'll come down now in my if statement. Let's go ahead and write our code. My db dot, we're going to go ahead and insert this. So I'll call insert row. And let's go ahead and take the et tasks dot get text dot to string. That'll be the string we're going to enter in. Looks like I spelled it wrong. And then the date, let's go ahead and use timestamp. And I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. Okay, so here's what we decided to do. I created today, which is our time object, which is going to go ahead and set the time to now, or the time that this activity was clicked. I went ahead and created a string called timestamp. And I said that timestamp is going to be today, which is going to be my time, formatted to something that I can read. And then I'm saying if edit text tasks is not empty, and it's going to go ahead and test for that right here, edit tasks dot get text to string. If that's not empty, go ahead and do our task, which is going to be to insert into our database and you can see my db dot insert row insert row is from the db adapter and I can see it right here and it's going to insert in a string called task and a string called date let's go back over here to our code and we decided to put in here for the first parameter the string that we want to enter in which is going to be whatever is in that text the edit text converted to a string and then also the timestamp, which is our current time, formatted to the way that I can read it. Okay, that was a lot of information to put in here. Hopefully it makes sense or it is somewhat clear to you. There still is one thing I forgot to do, and that is to go over to my activity main and tell that button to use this method, the on click add task. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. and then switch over here to the activity main.xml and there's the button that I want to use switch over here to the code and that button is called button add task and I'll just go ahead and add that attribute android colon on click and I'll go ahead and paste that in there so it's going to run the on click add task method I'll go ahead and save it come back over here to my main activity.java and it's going to run that method, which is going to get the date. It's going to format the date so I can read it and then check to make sure that that text box is, em is not empty and then insert it into the database using my DB, which is 
an object based off of the DB adapter class, which is going to use that insert row method to place this information in the database. Okay, in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at being able to populate that list view we have here on our activity so that we, I'll switch over to the graphical layout, so that we can actually see what the items are in the database. Because right now, if I were to run my application, I could be entering data into the database, but I would never see that data because I also need to retrieve that data out and then display that somewhere. So I will run the application after we get this list view set up so that we can see all of our tasks as they're entered into our database.